Are we living in the last days? Some say, yes, we are. Shouldn't you be telling people about that? Some people say it's very hard to witness. Let's talk about that. And with us once again to talk about this subject, Brent Miller. Hi, Brent. Thank you, Gary. It's good to have you here. And in particular, we're, we're uh, going to have a great program today because we're going to be talking about uh, something that, uh, that you co-produced a long time ago, back in 2010, 2011. It's a DVD called The Final Prophecies. Well, okay, it's a, it's a DVD. It has a picture of Jerusalem on the cover. It has the title, The Final Prophecies. <clears throat> and what's the big deal? <laughs> well, let's talk about what the big deal is. It's a very big deal because this particular DVD may have been spread abroad more than any other DVD produced in the 21st century. Uh, this thing has gone everywhere. I'll never forget when Bob Ulrich <clears throat> got a copy of this through the mail and he watched it. And the next day he came to me in great excitement. He says, Gary, you've got to, you've got to look at this, this video. This is the most incredible video I've ever seen. Well, I said, Bob, what's incredible about it? Well, it talks about prophecy. Well, yeah, Bob, you've watched 100 prophecy DVDs. Yeah, but this one, he said, it takes you right into the Holy Land and you really get a feeling of prophecy. So I took it home, I looked at it, he was right. It's phenomenal. And you've had a tremendous uh, reception. Uh, in fact, this, this thing has gone places uh, that probably you never expected, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, when we, um, we first decided to write the final prophecies, we had no idea it would be accepted in the way that it has been. In, in fact, it was, w we can't take the credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, we have to thank God for the distribution and for the message that has gone out. Uh, what it ended up being is the greatest evangelical tool that we know that Christians can use to help the secular world and convert the secular world. In fact, the, the spread of it was so great, not because of the Christian community, but because the Christian community gave it to the secular world and the secular world is the one who desire the product. You would see a document called The Final Prophecies. You would not expect it to reach number one on Amazon instant video streaming for six months in a row, honestly, beating wow. out every single Hollywood documentary movie. Every Hollywood movie, it beat out for six months in a row. And that was the beginning. Um, people started copying it, pilfering it, distributing it worldwide. We have personally distributed it to 43 different countries, and you are right, it has been received like no other DVD we've seen as an evangelical tool. Yeah, now this is where I really get interested, because I asked a question at the beginning of this program today. Uh, are we living in the last days? If so, shouldn't we be witnessing to people about that? And the answer that a lot of people would give is, well, I, I don't know how to witness. I've, I try talking to people and they don't listen to me. Uh, and, and yet, what a time mm -hmm. to be witnessing. And the subject here, the final prophecies, is the ultimate attention getter, right? Yes, yes, it really does. From the very beginning, it was designed to get the attention of the world. For example, we'll start with the title, The Final Prophecies. Christians see that with a picture of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and of course we think of Christian prophecies. Mm -hmm. um, a Muslim will look at that and see the Temple Mount. A secular person will see the words of the final prophecies uh, written in an ancient scroll type language and they'll think Nostradamus, Mother K uh, you know, Edgar Cayce, um, Mother Shipton, uh, Mayan calendar, they think prophecies. Oh, and there are prophecies that talk about the future. I'm interested. So In other words, right from the bat, you're, yeah. they're interested. You sort of like the final prophecies. You don't say biblical prophecies necessarily, just prophecies. Correct. And Everybody's interested in prophecy. I, I, I know that to be a fact. Yeah, they do. And we've taken that 
uh, not to create a bait and switch. We are very, very honest. We do talk about the final prophecies. We, tell, we do not mention any of these other um, uh, secular world prophetic writings that supposedly are prophetic. The DVD is strictly focused on the Bible and scriptures, but the way we present it to the people makes the secular person who is not interested in the Bible want to see it. The moment they put it in, it talks about prophecies from the past. It talks about statistical probability of so many events happening before you now yeah. have to accept it's either improbable or there's something going on. I'm not quite sure what. But during this time, you're not saying the Bible or the Old Testament. You're talking about scriptures, ancient texts. Look at all of these things that happened. If in Egypt there were this band of people called Israelites that left Egypt and they went across the Red Sea, Let's look at this scientifically. What would have happened? We explain that. It gets their attention. They, have, they may not thoroughly agree with biblical theology, but they don't understand it. But you, you present things in a way that is very, very scientific to them, and they have no reason to dispute it. And then you go on, and we give case after case after case, and by the time they're halfway through it, they're saying, okay, I can kind of see where this is going. I do appreciate it. It really does look like you're on to something. Then we change the terminology to ancient scriptures. Okay, I'm on board. Let's hear more. How these same scriptures that predicted everything you just heard also predict the future. And that's when it gets interesting. That's when people get excited because what we do is we talk about real world events. And, and even though that was made in 2011, these events are still going on and they're intensifying. So the events that that talks about so many years ago is just as apropos today as it was then. And people can see these events happening around the world and it continues to get their attention. And the thing about this, uh, the final prophecies, uh, and I have to rave about this, but I'll never forget Bob's words. The first time he ever viewed it, he said, Gary, the production values on this thing are like, uh, unlike anything I've ever seen before. The cinematography, the scripting, the continuity, everything that you want, putting a story together and coming to a conclusion is, is all there. It's very pleasant viewing, uh, and uh, it, it's, as, as I used to say, this is a real popcorn cruncher. You know, <laughs> you just, you can't, yeah. you can't leave once you start watching, you know, just, uh, you, you're there, and it, and it captures you in, in a very interesting way. Well, this is exactly what we need in the 21st century, because I think you believe, and I, I, be, I believe, that we are mm -hmm. in the last days. Are we in the last of the last days? What do you think? I believe we are at the end. I don't think we have that many years left um, as the final prophecies will show the convergence of religion, of tolerance, political collaboration between nations, um, economic collaboration as governments start to fail, as uh, a single world currency has even been proposed by Russia and other countries. We see all of these th things coming together as prophesied, right. but for what reason? They need to come together from a logical, worldly standpoint to set the stage for a single person to rule everything. Um, the person, the man of perdition, the person defined as the Antichrist. We show this progression of these various paths converging and what's happening around the world. Mm -hmm. The information that Prophecy Watchers shows every week. This information is continuing to solidify the final outcome of the final prophecies being fulfilled. Now we bring the individual to that point and then they finally realize, wait a second, I have accepted all of this statistical information I've accepted the fact that yes, all of these political things are happening, but guess what? These were prophesied, and yet they're happening, and I can see them happening around me next, and then we give them the what is going to happen after that. 
the moment we tell them what's going to happen after that, we don't go much further because they now have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. The choice is, do I turn this off and walk away forever now that I know, or do I now have to make a decision? That's why it's such an incredibly powerful evangelical tool. They are actually brought to the point where they have to make a decision. Do I now have to accept something that I never would have opened in my life, or do I walk away from it and pretend I never watched it? But I can't get the fact out of my head that I said yes, yes, yes throughout this entire you know, presentation, and then at the end I say no and walk away. Mm. You know, it bugs them and bothers them. So no. they give it to a friend, and it distributes. And it I want to go back to a point that you mentioned a minute ago. You, meant you sort of brushed past a point. There is a sort of a merging going on of political, economic, and religious power in the world today. Yeah. This, uh, a merger into, uh, well, for want of a better word, a kind of a monster. <coughs> uh, everything is, is coming together to control life on planet Earth. And all of this was prophesied, right? Correct. It was all prophesied. We see that in the end times there will be ten political factions, ten kingdoms. Um, the Antichrist will rule all of them after eliminating three of them. So they'll end up being seven with the Antichrist on top. Now, when we say merger, we say, we can think of that not as countries being destroyed. We can think of that as uniting for a common front. For example, um, most of Europe right now is under the EU. They all share a common currency. Mm -hmm. They all try to share the same political vote. Right. So they would be considered a single government. Now, the rest of the world's, oh, and by the way, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, they all have their own independent governments, but they work together. So when we say that all the world will be under a single authority, it doesn't mean the United States disappears or Canada disappears or Ethiopia disappears. It means that there will be an overriding body which supersedes all of them, and everyone gives their allegiance to that. And you know, kind of a united government of some sort. Now, people have been talking about this for years. Right. We're actually seeing it coming together in a visible way now, right? Right. In fact, I, I not only think that it has been coming for years, but the concept literally has been thrown in our face for many, many, many decades. Um, the concept of a one world order, for example. Um, illusions to that are even printed on United States currency. So it is, it is not new for people to hear that phrase, but this is what we're talking about in terms of political unification. We're talking to Brent Miller, who has produced a number, by the way, of, of very, very high quality Christian DVDs. Uh, today we're focusing on the final prophecies. I'd like to uh, introduce our uh, premier edition of The Prophecy Watchers, a soon-to-be monthly uh, magazine. And what we're doing right now in the initial stages of developing the magazine is offering you a lifetime subscription, a subscription for life for your gift of $100 to Prophecy Watchers. By the way, this offer expires on the 31st of so keep it in mind, one of these days, the 31st of March will come, and you will say, oops, I wish I had done that. But uh, you've still got a lot of time. This magazine is going to be cutting edge Bible prophecy. Uh, we're going to feature the work of uh, authors you know, like Tom Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Avi Lipkin, Ken Johnson, Bill Salas, Bill Koenig, writing about European politics, Carl Teichrib, a number of theologians, by the way, and I would like to include you because I, I think that uh, you have come up with some very interesting ideas and, and we have already talked with Brent about including a couple of articles. So I'm I'd looking love to forward do that. to that. Yep. It's called The Prophecy Watcher. And uh, just go to the online bookstore, scroll down, and you'll find out how uh, you can uh, become part of uh, the, the premier edition, Prophecy Watcher, for your gift of $100 a lifetime subscription. <clears throat> Knowledge is increasing. One of the signs of the last days, and I want to reread perhaps one of the most famous prophecies in the Bible, Daniel 12, 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book 
even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Let's just talk about many running to and fro. And uh, you and I were talking, uh, in fact, oh. on another program, about how many airliners are in the air right. at, at any given moment. Um, they estimate in the United States alone up to 54,000 airplanes in the United States flying every single day. Every day, 54,000. About 6,000 <laughs> commercial airlines and the rest are private pilots um, flying their own private planes. And that's just in the United that States. That is just the United States. So and the world is no different. Europe, Europe is no different. Yeah. Um, we have become such a high-tech society, planet-wide, that we want to go on vacation. We no longer think of driving to, say, Disneyland. We think of getting on a plane and going to Hawaii or the Bahamas. It is nothing for us to go. We move around the planet yeah. as if it is no obstacle to us. Um, and this is only a characteristic that it did not exist 100 years ago. Now, the prophecies also talk about knowledge increasing. We are having an exponential rate of knowledge growth like we have never seen ever in the history of this yeah. world. Um, in fact, they estimate that knowledge, worldwide knowledge doubles every 18 months. Now that's, that's mind boggling to fathom. Um, in 18 months, knowledge will double. 18 more months, it'll double again. That's four times. 18 more months, eight times. So that's only 12 years. 12 years later, within 12 years, well let me see, 12 years, you have actually an increase of 40 times the amount of knowledge on the planet. Hmm. And nobody can keep up with anything. No. I mean, we're talking about um, genetic research, science, engineering, um, every field. Let's talk about artificial intelligence. A, a couple of months mm. ago, there was a headline. That went, I'm sure you saw the headline. <coughs> Computer passes Turing test mm -hmm. for the first time. Now, the Turing test, Alan Turing, yeah. the, uh, the British mathematician, uh, is credited with being the, the first uh, uh, man who actually successfully put together a computer that worked. Mm -hmm. and helped defeat the Germans, by the way, by breaking the German code. <coughs> but Alan Turing said that the test for a good computer would be that if you, if you had one in the other room and you could talk to it by microphone and you couldn't tell whether you were talking to a computer or a real human being, mm -hmm. he said, that's when you know, that's when you would know that you have a real computer. Well, the Turing test has been passed now. Th they have done actual simulations, putting a computer in another room and participants over in this room and having them converse with the computer. By the way, in voice mm -hmm. mode, conversation. And the participants in the experiment could not tell whether they were talking to a computer or a real human being. Now, mm -hmm. that's a bit scary. Yeah, there's, there's going to be, there is so much push into designing artificial intelligence. They need a new type of computer. And research has been going on to a different type of computer, different type of memory. Uh, right now, um, to, to drop this into a very quick nutshell, uh, memory is binary. It's ones, ones or zeros, which does not work very well. Um, if I were to show an image of an elephant to you, your brain immediately, instantaneously, has an association with that image, layers it down with millions and millions of images, and instantaneously brings you up a copy of an elephant, drops in a label, and you say that's an elephant. Almost effortlessly. Yeah. That's associative memory. It's because each neuron is connected to each other neurons, not by a one or a zero equivalent, but by an infinite range of uh, resistance. So that every neuron is connected to every uh, neuron. Let's take a small slug. It has 12 neurons in its brain. That's all, 12, not billions like we have, 12. And it, that has enough information for it to live its entire life, um, mate, propagate, knows what to eat, knows what not to eat, knows how to live, everything, 12. Now, why? Because of associative memory. You need two major advancements. You need to create a memory architecture that's associative, which many companies and scientists around the world are doing, but I say, there's something that is far scarier than that. People are looking at creating 
a silicon DNA structure similar to the brain itself. In other words, copying God's creation. If you could make, bake in an oven, so to speak, the equivalent of a DNA-associated brain, it would then truly be able to be think with associative memory as a human would. The question is, who's going to program it? And what morality and what mm -hmm. philosophy and how is this thing going to well, you know, let interact me bring up with a us. dark answer to your question. Maybe it would program itself. Maybe it would uh, become aware of itself, and maybe it would begin to scheme for uh, supremacy of some sort. Maybe it would think to itself, you know, <clears throat> I'm really a lot better than all these human beings out here because I can think faster than them, and I, I think I'm going to develop a system that I can take over and, and develop my on, uh, own autonomous empire. It mm. might try to take over, right? There, there's a number of movies like that that have that <laughs> as a basic theme, yes. <laughs> so we're talking about these things. Daniel, the prophet, said, Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I think he was talking about this. Yeah. I think that God gave him just a little peek into the future. And uh, yeah. boy, has knowledge increased. And, and we've talked about this. But the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, sadly, has not increased. And, and here's the opportunity, the final prophecies. Uh, this DVD has gone all over the world several times. And if you haven't seen it, you're one of the few. <laughs> you you need, need to procure a copy of this for yourself. And I'm going to tell you in just a minute, but not right now, how to get a copy. It, but let's talk further. <clears throat> Uh, about prophecy as a witnessing tool. Okay. To me, it's the best witnessing tool there is. Okay, it, it actually is. And the reason why it works so well with the secular world, Christians don't fear because they know they have the love of God. They know that they are going to heaven. They don't have any fear at all. The secular world is fearful. When they see we talked about um, politics. That doesn't bother too many people. But when we talk about financial collapse, that creates fear in people. Now you're getting to their checkbook. Yeah. Um, loss of jobs. They can see all these things happening. Uh, countries are starting to have economic problems even in Europe. Even though yeah. you have a collaboration of countries, individual countries within that collaboration are finding they're not very well protected by the rest of the country, despite the fact that they join forces with them. You are seeing religious um, acceptance of everything. So when you accept all religions and all philosophies and all doctrines and your truth is good for you and my truth is good for me, that means if you accept everything, you believe in nothing. Which means you don't really believe in nothing. And that's the goal of the world, to merge all the religions so that we tolerate everybody. Once we've done that and we've normalized every single religion individually to accept every other religion, it would be a piece of cake as prophesied for the governments of the world to do the final step to get rid of the religions and put a person on top so that um, religion is no longer an issue. Um, so fear is what drives the secular world. Love drives the Christians. So when you talk about these prophecies, especially in our end times, we see these things converging. To us, it is maybe a little scary for some, but for others it's like, oh, we know what's coming next, and then after that, what's yeah. next, and what's, and we're looking for it. Right. Prophecy Watchers is looking for these things. The rest of the world sees these things, and when they know what's coming next, they go, oh my goodness, I'm scared. So that yeah. is why it strikes a chord with them. And basically, the motive here is not to scare people, the motive is simply to tell an ages old truth that God has a plan for this earth. And I think each generation has to be reminded once again, each generation tends to forget yeah. uh, what the previous generations have said and you have to remind everybody all over again, only you have to do it in the context of their thinking. In other words, in, in our era, uh, everybody's walking around with an electronic device. Uh, everybody is uh, uh, in instant communication. Every, mm -hmm. Everything is at the surface level. Buy, right. sell, trade, quick, quick, quick. How, how many friends do I have here you know, on, on my handheld computer? 
you know, how many pictures can I send, you know, in, tw in a 24 hour picture. Everybody's interconnected and everything is quick, quick, quick. And this generation has to be reminded once again of that wonderful offer that was made to humanity right. by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we found that this is the best way to do it. We have packed so much into this production in an hour and a half. People want to be entertained in the secular world. So even though this is very serious material, they, as a DVD, will plug it into their DVD player and they'll follow through it. And we have packed very carefully chosen sequence of events of past and future prophecies to lead them to the knowledge of the Lord. So that is why we believe that this is almost a timeless piece right now and especially even more so with the upcoming events that are happening in the world today. It, this, this has been almost supernaturally effective. Uh, it's, it's an inspired production. Production values are beyond anything you can imagine. The message very concise, very tight, very exciting, uh, uh, amazingly exciting information, the way it's put together. And uh, we are uh, offering you this, the final uh, prophecies. You can have your very own copy, and the price is free. That's right. <laughs> Just go to prophecywatchers.com, scroll down, and click on the banner. Follow the instructions and you'll get your free copy of the final prophecies. And the price? Free. Brent wants you to have this. And I don't know how many millions or <laughs> more copies of this have gone out. Well, since, since it has uh, been released about four years ago, um, there have been quite a number of organizations around the world that have converted it electronically and distributed it electronically without our knowledge. We can't even estimate at this point, but a couple years ago we estimated well over two million and escalating. Wow. It's that popular, folks. It's an amazing, uh, amazing video. And if you've got a friend and you've, you've been wanting to tell a friend about the Lord and about salvation, about the outcome of Bible prophecy, it's here, the final prophecies. And uh, Brent Miller, is a co-producer of this production it, and it's basically it has one purpose a, a, as a witnessing tool and Correct. and it has been extraordinarily effective and uh, I, what can we say from this point on in fact we've got just about a half minute to go uh, any uh, parting thoughts for our audience um, I do believe that God's hand was in the creation of this product it took an entire year of traveling to Turkey, Jordan, Israel, filming what people would find to be interesting. Uh, going through the Red Sea, we show chariot wheels at the bottom mm. of the Red Sea. Um, you know, showing that there was an Egyptian army of some sort that should be, is there where they should not be. Wow. Brent, There's I'm going to have to stop right there because the clock has gotten to right. us. Brent Miller. Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman. Keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com. In the meantime, keep watching, everybody.